Cafe. Anyway. Oh. Mike's Daily Podcast. We're doing laundry today at Cafe Anyway. It's just that kind of a day. And it's F- 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 episode 2607. Mike's Daily Podcast. 2607. And I have to say... Congratulations to one of my coworkers. It's going to be his wedding day coming up real soon. And maybe you're getting married too. It, that's the kind of thing that happens this time of year. And you may want to consider in, in lieu Mike's daily podcast. In lieu of wedding presents to have money sent to a particular account, Mike's a PayPal, a daily I don't know, a fund me, go fund me, whatever. Yeah. What's the other one? The uh, thing that people use money to do stuff. That's my cute, cutesy names. Anyway, cafe. Anyway, do I have one? Oh, I think I do. If you go to... You will travel into the incredible universe. Right off the bat, I'm asking for money? No. That's not right. That's impo- That's not good if, if you're a podcaster and you're asking for money at the very beginning. My, 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 my. Well, it looks like if you go to my website, mikesdailypodcast.com, and you click on the Spotify one, it allows you to support this podcast. It, and it also, when you press that button like I just did, it comes to suddenly have all kinds of internet issues. But the important thing is the clothes are getting clean. The front panel will close automatically. Please remain seated. And, and it's also important if you are listening to this on May the 12th, which you probably are, wasn't it just Nurses Day the other day, last weekend? Oh, it's International Nurses Day. Okay. And it is also National Limerick Day. And here's today's podcast. A limerick picture. is basically a lyric, but I think it's shorter. Yes. What is the other? Oh, it's National Odometer Day. Oh, really? We just... Anything? An odometer? We really care about odometers? <sighs> what? Why? Now I'm... It's also National Military Spouse Appreciation Day. That makes sense. Oh, National Fibromyalgia Day. Not fun. The late great Basil the Boxer. Yes, I... I dated somebody with... That And Oh It's not good They were It's I, We didn't date very long It was a bad OK Cupid Arrangement And It wasn't because of the Fibromyalgia that she had Or she thought she had I don't know if she really did It's There was some weird Stuff going on I can't go into it here Okay, I can. No, what I will go into is National Odometer Day. Um, it, w- the celebration is held to teach people about their odometers and how to better care for their vehicles so they stay in better condition. Traditionally, a purely mechanical device is from nationaltoday.com. Versions of the odometer appeared across history. Ancient Greece used specialists trained to measure footsteps. I guess they were the original odometers. And ancient Romans had their own versions of the odometers. Independent of their de- of these developments, odometers were also invented in the Han dynasty in the form of a road carriage with a drum. As the story goes, each time the measurement of distance was met, a wooden figure would hit the drum. Experts consider this to be a highly advanced version of the odometer. Someone hitting a drum. And cite this as the influence on the present odometer. Multiple stories include the predecessor to the modern odometer as one developed for wagons and other horse-drawn vehicles to measure the distances they traveled. A special invention by a Mormon pioneer. 
set the course for odometer development. William Clayton attached his device, a rodometer, to his wagon that was heading west to Utah. This was followed by the invention of brothers Arthur and Charles Warner of the first odometer for an automobile called the Autometer. The brothers went on to patent other items like the tachometer, a paper making machine, an electric brake, a power clutch. They also developed a thermometer for the road, for the motor. But then they lost that patent in a lawsuit. Oh no. Fascinating. So there you go. I hope you are enjoying this day, whatever day. It is Maybe it's way off past uh, May 12th And you're way off in the future Hello future you Nice to meet you I'm past Mike Mike in the past And Stuff went on today And yesterday In the world And the day before that And other And Throughout this week And I've missed two days Sorry I had all kinds of things going on I just I really One of the things was to just Relax for a little bit And catch my breath Because the person who is Getting married Congratulations out to them Is uh, also someone that I lean on A lot He takes care of a lot of stuff at work So I'm going to be a little bit flailing The next couple of weeks May not be able to do the podcast as much But Are electric vehicle sales declining is the main question you're probably asking. Electrifying the car market may be getting more difficult with the share of Americans who say they are very unlikely to consider an electric vehicle for their next vehicle. In March of this year, 21% of new vehicle shoppers said they were very unlikely to consider an electric vehicle. Up from... 18.9% in February And 17.8% in January As we go outside a cafe anyway Where we're bringing Mike's Daily Podcast Somewhere in Podcastro Valley The last place on earth Anyway Yeah That might be shocking to people in the Bay Area Every other car is a Tesla And a lot of these cars These Tesla It's a model Model I don't know which model it is What letter But it's some particular Tesla That sits up high It's kind of a big car You might as well be driving behind a Ford truck Because they are really difficult to see around If you're driving on Later that day Oh my (laughs) Thanks Rob Yeah no that was my, My stupid Recording apparatus Stopped recording I was right in the middle of talking about the Ed Bagley Jr. movie (laughs) <laughs> that came out in the early O's about electric vehicles being dead. The death of the electric vehicle, I think, or the, of the electric car. And now that movie seems so dated because back then everybody was, ooh, the big car manufacturers are going to end making electric vehicle, all the electric vehicles. Well, what, the fact of the matter was, and, and I think at that point, you couldn't buy outright an electric vehicle. You had to lease it. And that was causing all kinds of issues. But yeah, people's big fear about how far a car can drive, an electric car. That's causing, yeah, people aren't so interested in buying a car that's not going to take them. So, and then when they get to their destination, or if they're on their way to the destination, how are they going to recharge the car? It takes a while to charge a car versus putting just putting gas in the car. Yeah. So there's that Uh, So yes That might be why it's declining Vehicle pricing They're just so expensive They are so expensive And back then People were leasing Because it was too expensive Yes the charging infrastructure Is so bad But 21% now saying Very unlikely To consider buying an EV And electric vehicles Market share Of all new vehicle sales Dropped All the way to 7.3% in March The record high Was 8.5% In February But a year ago It was only 2.6% So We'll see What happens We shall see 
uh, hopefully we will see what 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 if it the price co- continues to go down. We have a Democrat president. That generally means they're more interested in trying to get infrastructure built. But then as soon as a Republican president goes in, they're going to defund all that because that's going to be like a waste of time. And plus, usually Republican presidents are in the pockets of big oil and they don't want, they, you know, they, why are you spending money on this? You should spend money on uh, things like more gas stations. But here's something that you might pay money on. Or they, this company will pay you actually. Amazon will pay you $10 to pick up packages. One of the main perks of having an Amazon Prime account is free shipping. I heard there was some strange attempt at testing this theory about Amazon Prime, but you know, you could ship anything and somebody just to see if this would work bought a two ton safe to have it delivered to their house free shipping they wanted to see if that was the case I don't know if that still is the case but I think Amazon's put their foot down since then when you need something fast people get the Amazon Prime for that it's simple to place an order have a package arrive at your doorstep the next day the online retailer has actually the online the online retailer will actually pay you to pick up your package instead of having them deliver it. That's how it is at uh, Walmart. They, I mean, you can have it at a Walmart and you go and pick it up, but they don't pay you. However, Amazon will pay you ten dollars to pick up the packages instead of having them delivered. You can opt to pick up your order from places that Amazon owns, like Whole Foods, Amazon Fresh. Or Kohl's. Wait, Amazon owns Kohl's? I don't know. This I don't know. Like, I don't know that much about fibromyalgia. But it, while it was reported that the changes were implemented due to rising ship, shipping costs, Amazon said it's not a cost-cutting measure. This is not a cost-cutting measure. The retail giant did make some changes earlier this year in April. Amazon announced plans to charge some customers $1 to return packages through UPS if a Whole Foods, Kohl's, or Amazon Fresh is closer to delivery address than the UPS store. Hmm. In order to potentially minimize the number of returns in general, Amazon also implemented implemented a frequently return badge on products that have significantly higher return rates for their product category. So if they know that they got a Kohl's closer to you or Amazon Fresh or Whole Foods, they will charge you a dollar if you're going to return it. All because of Amazon putting their foot down. Burger King debuted a red Whopper ahead of Spider-Man across the Spider-Verse, which is coming out May 15th. It is a red bun with black sesame seeds. Ah, so it looks like a spider. I get it. That sounds very appetizing. Do we get a dollar for eating that? Hmm. Oh, and MTV News is shutting down after 36 years. MTV is now owned by Paramount. And MTV News in the 80s was highly influential among younger viewers. I remember Kurt Loder vividly. Kurt Loder and... Th- th- these... The MTV news reports were short I think it was under five minutes The thing I remember most about the MTV news Was the very cool Open And you'd see A a little like small Looked like a toy Moon With a transmitter on it And it's spinning around And there (laughs) I think that's what it was And then at the very end, after they were done with the story, which was usually something that was ripped out of Rolling Stone magazine, I think. Oh, here comes Rocky the Cat. They would say, uh, MTV News, do you decide, or something like that. Get it first. Had a tag like that. Do, do, do. We report it. Was that it? You hear it first. Maybe that's what it was. 
Google hosted their annual I slash O developers conference at the Shoreline Amphitheater. They came out with the new search that they've been talking about forever, their AI search, and their uh, foldable phone. It's a phone that it's got, it looks interesting. You can open it up like a little book. I saw a quick video on it. I don't know that much other than that. And Rocky the cat is clawing my leg. Stop! Outside a cafe anyway, somewhere in Podcastro Valley, the last place on earth. The other places that you can go online to start a fundraising thing, other than GoFundMe, which seems to be the Xerox of the funding website world. People think of that instantly. Oh, Patreon. That was the other one I was thinking of. There's also Donate Lee. Donately. There's one called Double the Donation. There's Donor Search, Bonfire, Shopify, SendGrid, Webflow, Instapage, Square Pay- Space. Squarespace has got a fundraiser side to their website. There's one called Experiment, Indiegogo. There's Edco, that's for school fundraising. There's Kiva, K I V A, and ABC Fundraising. That, according to donatelead.com, that talks about that's, I guess they're one of the websites. So, there. Outside a cafe, anyway, somewhere in Podcastro Valley. Look who is here right now who's not going to donate to the show. Called Mike's Daily Podcast. Hello, Michael Myers. It's Matt. I'm rude. To be going. No, I'm not going to donate to the show, but I like your cat. Ooh. Thank you. Do you like Rocky? Yes. Do you like his claws? Yes. Do you like it when he's clawing your leg? No. Yeah, that's not fun. Stop it. Dang, these cats. Look who else is here. Hello, Dave Mike. This is Valentino, the parking attendant. And this is Bison Bentley. Do you know that? Mike, you didn't tell us what the podcast picture is, D. Yeah, pancake picture. Do you know what? Oh, let's see. It is of in Podcastro Valley yesterday. I was walking with my lovely lady friend, and I took this wonderful picture. See it at mikesdailypodcast.com. Let's see. I'm going to go on a little search now. And by the way, all that information. That I just threw at you Came from Rob Black I produce his podcast Rob Black and your money And he had all that Fascinating information And I wanted it To be in your head Through my mouth To your ears And hopefully you found it Very interesting Let's see Whatever happened to Kurt Loder Is what I want to know you know, Beyonce's come a long way. Check out this 2003 interview. I'm older now, and I'm, I'm making... Oh, wow, she was young then. Okay, let's see. Next up, MTV News. How many times have you heard this one over the years? That's it. That's the that's the sound Next it up, makes. MTV News. How many times have you heard this one over the years? Here. Hi, I'm Kurt Loder, the- Kurt Loader. TV News Brief. That is, uh, that- wow, that is how it sounded. I'm Kurt Loader with an MTV News Brief. More on Kurt Cobain. Yeah, he would always be talking about somebody in grunge. So, let's see. Oh, and they did a sign-off. It's the end of an era. After 36 years, MTV News is officially signing off. It was announced that MTV News was shutting down this week as part of larger layoffs at parent company Paramount Global. Yeah, I don't know. Like I said, it was Tabitha Soren was the other person that was. <laughs> wow. So the Meteora 20 set is England. And the rumor was that. We- yeah, they've been online. Looks like they've been posting stuff up until two weeks ago. And it looks like they talk to movie stars more now, not so much musicians. 
oh I should probably throw in a plug here somebody that I know that does a lot of talking with musicians who has a, a website where she interviews musicians it's called B-Sides and that's on the Instagram I don't know if they actually have a website but all right and I'm gonna find right now if it kills me the actual it's funny because that was Carson Daly reporting that and Carson Daly was huge on he got his start basically on MTV actually I think he got his start on KROQ in Los Angeles if I'm not mistaken Jimmy Kimmel came from there Adam Corolla came from there a lot of people it was quite the place for the birth of <laughs> several people that would get big on late night television all right let's see I had to do I cheated I stopped the tape because I had to try and find this I had to this is how I found this I typed in MTV news 1980s and it came up with Kurt Loder in 1988 and this is how the news would usually end check this out this was something you would never hear on MTV nowadays because he says we'll take right now back to music <laughs> like it was radio it was a music radio station when was the last time they had music videos on MTV? I don't know. I haven't watched in a while. I might be wrong, but here we go. Five. That's the news for now. Stay tuned for more music on MTV. MTV News. You hear it first. That's what it was. You hear it first. Okay. Thank you so much for listening to today's podcast. If you would like to chime in about anything we covered today, you can call me at a phone number that I have right here, 510-228-4640. That's 510-228-4640, because I said it twice. It's probably now lodged into your brain. Thank you so much for listening. Tell all your friends about the podcast. Did you know more, more podcasts get listened to if you tell them about it? it? Word of mouth is what makes it work, is what I've been told. I'll believe it when I see it, but there you go. And with more ways to reach me, it's A-Frame. Mike's Daily Podcast is written and produced and performed by Mike Matthews. His podcast is super easy to find. Download or listen to his show and read his blog at mikesdailypodcast.com. Email Mike now at mikesdailypodcast at gmail.com. See you tomorrow. Bye.